Oh, here's the next question. Is this election a referendum on Barack Obama, yes or no, Pat Buchanan? It is definitely a referendum on Barack Obama and his competence and it basically the competency of the federal government under Barack Obama. Hello. His low approval ratings aren't uh, helping, but Ronald Reagan, the sainted Ronald Reagan, uh, Republicans lost the Senate in 1986 when Reagan was at the height of his popularity. So there's a lot more that going on besides the presidency. Clarence. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, unfortunately for Obama, he's been compared to Bill Clinton, who, who managed to gain seats in, during the Monica Lewinsky scandal at this point in his two, uh, two oh, terms. Oh, is that right? Yes. Tell us about that. And that, well, I, I won't go into all the details. You haven't got time, but... <laughs> <laughs> but let, let me she's just say though scene, you know that, that uh, well, well, yeah, as she's entitled to be. But you know, this was this was uh, that was a case where uh, Clinton actually generated sympathy for himself and for the Democrats, and the right. Republicans came out losers. Obama hasn't been able to swing anything close to that. Yeah. Mark, no, I think uh, I predicted on this show a number of months ago that the Republicans would increase their margin in each house and and would take control of the uh, house of representatives i think obama is the principal cause of it and so too is a weak economy uh, and don't believe the uh, employment five percent growth more? excuse me a second that's right. one one period and i can go into it just one thing okay i'm not going to go into that but it's the employment numbers it's the job numbers that is going to affect the election and those job I numbers are very agree. weak and that's what's going to affect yeah. this uh, at yeah. every at every level of every state the economy has problems uh, the stagnating wages the low uh, uh participation in the, in the workforce and and continuing inequality. Those are all uh, uh, themes that were present in the previous president and much of which this president inherited. This um, election is definitely a referendum on Barack Obama. Of course. Don't forget the McLaughlin Group has its own website and you can watch this uh, program or earlier programs on the web at any time from anywhere in the world at McLaughlin.com. Could anything be simpler? McLaughlin.com right. or more self-rewarding. <laughs> Issue two. Once more into the breach, the Liberian breach. What I uh, signed this morning was a, a memorandum to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in response to the memorandum uh, of recommendation I received from the chairman and the chiefs yesterday to uh, go forward um, uh, with a policy of essentially 21-day incubation for our men and women who would be returning from West Africa. The fact is uh, the military will have more uh, Americans in yeah. Liberia than uh, any other uh, department. Liberia is the epicenter of the Ebola outbreak now gripping West Africa. Under orders from Commander-in-Chief Obama, the United States is sending hundreds of military personnel, mainly from bases in Colorado and Texas, to build treatment facilities in Africa for Ebola patients and administer humanitarian relief. Sorry. Defense well, Secretary uh, Hagel said uh, the plan uh, to isolate U.S. Yeah, troops yeah. for 21 days before their return was developed in consultation with military families who, he said, very much wanted a safety valve, unquote, to prevent the spread of Ebola. <laughs> Liberia has long-standing historical ties to the United States. It was founded in 1817 as a colony for freed American slaves to be resettled in Africa and declared itself to be a free republic by Governor J.J. Roberts in 1847 under a constitution patterned after that of the United States. Many Liberians can claim descent from African Americans who settled in Liberia in the 19th century. And interestingly, its principal port city is named Buchanan. Buchanan. What's with Buchanan? Buchanan, Secretary of State James Buchanan, also President of the United States, John, a member of the American Colonization Society, like a lot of the Founding Fathers. He was a second generation. But this was, a, this was established basically by the American Colonization Society and Americans of all parties, basically, who felt that they ought to find a place if, for slaves when they, didn't believe, when they felt if we're going to put an end to slavery. They didn't believe that blacks and whites could live together, and they wanted to find a place in Africa for African Americans to live. That was the name of the game before Abraham Lincoln. And Lincoln supported it uh, initially as a possible option among other options. Sure, but yeah. you know, I was in Liberia with Richard Nixon, John, 
and clearly we went to we had big meeting with all of them and they were as american as they were li like americans the folks running it up until master sergeant samuel doe had that brutal revolution mm -hmm. and murdered them all and bayoneted them on the beach a lot of the guys we had talked to Right. Ellen? Well, they've had a lot of problems with governance, but they do have a, a female president, Ellen Sirleaf Johnson, mm -hmm. I believe. Right. And uh, but they don't have any kind of medical infrastructure, and they've been overwhelmed by uh, the spread of Ebola. So I give President Obama a lot of credit. He was ahead of the curve when yeah. he deployed American troops to Liberia. Uh, our our military has the uh, resources and the logistical expertise, and I also think it's a right policy to quarantine them for 21 days. The American American uh, military families were pressing for this, and uh, that's very different from quarantining medical personnel that go Why? over there. Why? Because um, when you go into the military, I know, you I surrender your rights. I when know, but, you are but, like the nurse in Maine and you're exhibiting no... But Eleanor, why, if it is the right thing to do for the military to get 21 days quarantine when they're not treating patients or transporting patients, but it's okay for a nurse or someone back, an aid worker, to come back and go out on the street or to go bike riding in Maine? There is no because consistency no between that in terms <laughs> of the health of the American people. No, we, well, we, we have, diff we yeah. have a, a different relationship wi with the military. When you go into the military, you give up many of your rights, and fighting Ebola in West Africa is less dangerous than uh, going on no. night patrols in Afghanistan. The medical personnel that go over there on a voluntary basis and they come back and they monitor their health and everything we know about this disease says if you have no symptoms, you're not spreading the disease. Well, and, tell it to uh, that and Governor who's Christie. Up there in New York. Well, Gov that doctor the doctor reported himself reported voluntarily. Himself this voluntarily. is the difference. Yeah, but it came right if out may, in, in a number of I days. I just inject yeah. something uh, here. In the, yeah. the military culture is different. In the military culture, when the order is given, people follow uh, it. And this is for the, yeah. for the sake of everybody. In the civilian culture, you want to encourage volunteerism that's and that's what we're talking about but in the civilian health, culture health personnel if you want to the put the is, health of the american people first Pat, that, that Pat, nurse disease, that nurse Pat, would allow herself to be quarantined not, the disease is, is not catching is, is not the, right. uh, after 21 you days showing symptoms you're not showing symptoms good morning good morning out there number one number one number one you agree to these soldiers aren't showing symptoms these catch excuse me right these soldiers if i may say so are not there voluntarily they're a part there of a, as a military contingent, and I don't think they should be forced to, in a sense, lose any possible protections they can get. No, and as far as I'm concerned, more. well, you don't know how they're protected. Well, yes, okay? I do, because they're because not working 21 with, days, with Ill 21 patients. 21 days is not the worst thing that could happen in order to protect the people they get back to. And another thing, military. let me just say this, mm -hmm. okay? You don't take the slightest chance of a catastrophic outcome. The last thing in the world you want exactly. to do is to risk that, that well, this kind of disease should be well, right. right. What, what do you advocate then? Supporting right. military. She ought to be quarantined yeah. for 21 uh, days. That's all it is. <laughs> we'll be back to this issue in a future, in a future program. <laughs> issue three, voter ID. Is it a plus or is it a minus? I think it's a pretty good law. I mean, I don't see it affecting anyone. I mean, it's basically they want to make sure that you are the person you are. I think it is a partisan uh, trick to try and prevent people from being able to vote, and I'm very, very much against it. The Supreme Court ruled 6-3 to three this month that Texas can require voters to show photo identification before voting in this Tuesday's election. The Obama administration had argued against the new law on the grounds that it discriminates against poor and minority voters who will now have to present one of seven forms of government-issued ID to cast a ballot. Three justices, Ginsburg, Sotomayor, and Kagan, sided with the Justice Department. In her dissent, Justice Ginsburg argued that the Texas law would disenfranchise, quote, hundreds of thousands, unquote, of voters. Earlier this month, the Supreme Court upheld an injunction barring the state of Wisconsin from executing its new voter ID law. The court's reasoning seems to rely on the degree to which the states make it possible for the poor to acquire identification, such as by reducing the cost to obtain a birth certificate or state-issued identity cards. Thirty-one states now require voters to show some form of identification. Fifteen states require photo identification. Despite predictions that such laws will suppress minority turnout, empirical evidence from recent election tells us 
a different story. In Ohio and Rhode Island, where photo ID laws have gone into effect, minority voting actually increased rather than decreased. Question, is a requirement to show photo identification before voting a good idea or a bad idea? One second. I think it's a good idea. I mean, in New York State and, and to some extent in New York City, believe me, there are people who are selling these cards that will now allow people to vote, and they're not, uh, shall we say, representative of the people. So I think it is perfectly uh, appropriate to legitimize and make sure that you are legitimizing the people who vote. You're talking about fake IDs? Yeah, fake IDs. Well, that's ID. against you the law anyway. Them. Yeah, but, right? but the fact is that those are not uh, with photographs, okay? Okay. And they were, they were for sale all over the place, and believe me, yeah. they were used in, in, in uh, various... But it's already uh, against the law to register with a fake I ID. I understand, but the, uh, I don't the want fact is the question I was, want them are to be able to vote and get bet. their pictures on it and just yeah. go yeah. ahead and well, vote. Well, we all want to enable people to vote, but, but the, the question was, is this a good idea or a bad idea? It's a good idea if you want to suppress voter turnout. Right. It's Happy a bad can. idea right. if you want to increase the number of people eligible to vote. Right. And that is what the way the court have yeah. waited. The Texas court called this a poll tax, and that it was what, what, what that's what it was. But the way it was know, implemented. The, out of the Texas Supreme law court has basically been basically ruled not on the merits of these laws, but because right. the changes were too close to the election. And exactly. basically, and the, the, all of these efforts to suppress the votes happen in Republican <laughs> states with <laughs> Republican enough. governors and Republican well, legislatures because the party doesn't well, have any ideas because, and they're terrified of the demographic know, changes and they're right. trying to as Barack keep Obama said himself of the Barack electorate. Obama says, come out and vote, but, but only once because this isn't Chicago. The Democratic Party has a historical reputation right. oh. of stealing elections. Is there as, a as problem? Is, is there, there a problem? Is, is, is there a say, problem? It what? is a good idea to have a voter ID. Look, John, you go to cash a check. I go down to Fox News to get in there. I still have to show my driver's license with a picture in it. You go anywhere, you know, on a book tour. Everywhere you go, you've got to show ID and photo ID. I just want to correct the record. Uh, uh, studies have shown that while there is some voter fraud uh, w with uh, in-person voting, there's also voter fraud with absentee ballots, which tend to be more Republican. Uh -huh. So uh, it's not well, a partisan. It shouldn't be a partisan issue if you unless had, you want to change the turnout. If you turnout. had voter ID right, on that, you wouldn't have that problem and, and either. And well, and some Texas, states are starting to, but you don't hardly hear about that until Democrats press the issue. Right. And, and Republicans Texas, only want in-person voting. In Texas, voting. they, accept, totally they accept as identification right. a carried gun permit, but well, not a student right. ID. Of course. Exactly. Well, that but is a serious, that is a serious ID. Uh, but well, not well, what about a student ID? A student ID, student ID. Student ID is a bunch of students that be handling oh, yeah, themselves right, out. Are you right. kidding? Uh, that shows that you're a resident, doesn't it? <laughs> Closing question. Have any, election, question you accept? have any election outcomes been decided by votes cast by illegal aliens? Quickly. No. I would no. say yes. No. No. I would say no. if you're talking all the way down the ballot, yes. No. No, no that's speculation. There's no, no. actual evidence no. of it. Sorry. Out of time. Bye-bye.